Baptist preacher laying down hellfire and brimstone may not make news, but one guy is burning up the blogs for some really controversial wishes for the president. When I go to bed tonight, Stephen L. Anderson is going to pray for Barack Obama to die and go to hell. He's saying, why would you do that? That, that our country could be saved. That's Stephen L. Anderson. You heard him himself preaching at Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona, and he's outraged over a lot, really, but mostly involving President Obama. In fact, he named a whole sermon about hating President Obama. Sort of the thing that Secretary of Homeland Security, Janet Napolitano, warned could lead to a rise in extremism. That warning was controversial when it came out in April, so is that what we're seeing, a rise here in extremism? With me now, NBC terrorism analyst Evan Coleman. You know, it struck me, I was reading through some of this Arizona preacher's um, sermons. There's a lot of homosexual hatred. Yeah. There's a lot of fury at the government. And there's a lot, he calls Barack Obama the devil. Yeah. It struck me that the, in, our, in this country, if the same thing were being said in madrasas, we would be up in arms. Yeah, it's, it's amazing that this kind of rhetoric is allowed given if you're a certain kind of person, if you're a patriotic American, you can say whatever you want, no matter how far along the line it comes to inciting people towards violence against other innocent people. It's completely unjustified. And honestly, if I was the Republican Party right now, if I was Michael Steele, I would be run away, running away from these people as fast as possible. I would be disassociating myself as quickly as possible because it's really only a matter of time before somebody else follows exactly what these people are saying. And I say somebody else because it's already happened. We've already had instances of someone shooting up the Holocaust Museum. Does anyone have any doubt that these feelings are real and that there is a small minority of people who are willing to put these thoughts into action? I want to be clear here. Uh, I, I'm using Stephen Anderson because his words are so hateful. No. They're so outrageous. But I want to be clear. It's not, it, it's, I'm not accusing him of taking action in any violent way, in any criminal way. But my question here is, if you have Homeland Security reporting that the recession, that um, disgruntled veterans coming back from the Iraq war, that having a man of color in the White House, whether it could lead to ex extremism. And then in August, you have the Southern Poverty Law Center reporting that hate groups have grown. Uh, it's, the growth has been the highest in 10 to 12 years. And they say all it's lacking is a spark. Is this sort of vitriol the spark that lights the fire? Yeah, it, it literally is playing with fire. It it is taking people who are very easily manipulated and can be very easily pushed into doing something terrible and it is giving them the ideology that they are seeing. It's the same thing as providing a madrasa to people who want to join Al-Qaeda and instructing them that violence is a good thing, that suicide operations are a good thing. And frankly, look, I mean, these people are a little bit cowardly because if they like guns so much and if they like killing so much, I'd be happy to set them up with a one-way ticket to Iraq or Afghanistan where society still decides key decisions based upon the barrel of a gun. And if that's the way they want to live, go there. In America, we decide things on the basis of ideas. We debate th those ideas. We don't yeah. threaten people with firearms. That, and we hope that there's logic and thought behind it, not just passion and anger. Hopefully. Evan, thank you. Thank you. I'm not a crook.